podcast host Joe Rogan spread a far right wing lie about forest fires in Oregon. I'm going to get to this clip in a second here, but let's be clear. This is something that if anybody else said it, Fox News, Ben Shapiro, CNN, MSNBC, everybody that does this work would be coming out to denounce it. Now, there is a reason why some people hold back when it comes to Joe Rogan, and I'm going to get into a bit of that after the clip. But first, here is the lie that he spread. I actually love Portland. It's one of my favorite places to perform. Most, really? most of the people there are very nice. But uh, there's a madness going on there. You want to talk about madness of crowds? That that is that exemplifies yeah, yeah. that right now. And it's uh, to me, yeah. they, they, they've arrested people for lighting forest fires up there. They've arrest, yeah, yeah, yeah. arrested left wing people for lighting these forest fires. You know, air quote activists. And uh, this is something that's also not widely being reported. You know, that people have actually been arrested for lighting fires up there. <sighs> Okay. Now, before I even get into this misinformation, the reason this matters is because Rogan has an audience of tens of millions. If this was some random podcaster who had no audience, then who cares? But he has a massive audience. Just signed a Spotify deal worth an estimated around $100 million. Rogan has a massive audience. And a lot of those people aren't all that political, at least not all that engaged in the back and forth. They are, a lot of them, I would assume, lean conservative based on a lot of his commentary, but a lot of them also lean left. And Rogan's appeal really is across the board, but it's also a lot, to a lot of apolitical people, meaning that comments like this have an impact. When he says something this stupid, many people believe it. So no, Left-wing activists are not lighting forest fires in Oregon. One simple search. He has Jamie right there. He has his producer right there. He could have said, Jamie, look this up, see if I'm full of shit. And he would have found that, in fact, he is full of shit. The FBI in Portland had to release a statement saying reports that extremists are setting wildfires in Oregon are untrue. Help us stop the spread of misinformation by only sharing information from trusted official sources. FBI Portland and local law enforcement agencies have been receiving reports that extremists are responsible for setting wildfires in Oregon. With our state and local partners, the FBI has investigated several such reports and found them to be untrue. Going on, they say conspiracy theories and misinformation take valuable resources away from local fire and police agencies working around the clock to bring these fires under control. Please help our entire community by only sharing validated information from official sources. Left-wing activists are not lighting forest fires. There's even more information here. People are being arrested for arson, but no, they're not Antifa. I mean, this, this goes into a very... Uh, again, I link to all my sources below the video, so you can read. This is a BuzzFeed article. They, ha they link to all the information. They source all of it. Tons of reporting here on the actual um, fires that are being set, but it has nothing to do with left-wing left activists. This is from uh, OregonLive.com. People pushing the conspiracy theories have largely pointed to the Almeida fire, which Ashland Police Chief O'Meara confirmed has spurred a criminal investigation. O'Meara said rumors claiming anti-fascists were involved are 100% false information. They even had to go as far as uh, Clackamas County here. Deputy placed on leave after video captures him blaming Antifa for putting lives at stake in wildfires. When even the police departments <laughs> are putting officers on leave over comments like this, when even they are taking something seriously, then you know it's serious. So this is a total lie. Now, this is the, okay, as I said, I'm gonna get into um, why some people don't go after Rogan the way they should. Uh, I'll say myself included at times, but uh, first let me just like, if you, listen or watch Rogan's podcast still. Um, and I know I've talked to people. I see the comments. People have, a lot of my audience has, uh, that, that comment that I, the comments that I see have largely stopped listening to his show. And it's because every, almost every single episode, even when it's a great guest and they're having a good conversation, like Edward Snowden, 
he'll inject some BS about how, oh, the left is trying to censor people. And it, it just, it, <laughs> it sets the whole conversation off course. It, it brings in a ton of BS that doesn't need to be discussed because it is just complete bullshit. Right now, you have the Attorney General, William Barr, suggesting that they throw their political opponents in jail, including the Seattle mayor, and charge protesters with sedition. To not understand that that is the actual threat to free speech, and to focus on some kids at a college campus not happy that Ben Shapiro is speaking, like, you really have your priorities twisted. And again, we have to go back and, and understand this is not... The difference between a Joe Rogan and, stay, say, a Steven Crowder is that Rogan is not malicious in what he is doing. He's not knowingly spreading misinformation. He's just a bit of an idiot, <laughs> for lack of a better term. He's a bit of an idiot. And he engages in these conversations that have a lot of nuance, a lot of details that he simply is not aware of. And this is what leads him to spreading this bullshit. Now, again, if he didn't have a massive audience, it wouldn't matter. But instead of focusing on conspiracies, how about bringing up actual facts? Like, how about during episodes, maybe he should bring up, hey, Jamie, bring up a uh, daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people. Let's compare the U.S. to other countries. Let's see how Trump is doing. This is how Trump is doing. So you have other Australia, Norway, Canada, UK. You can add pretty much any other country in here, except for like Brazil, also run by a neo-fascist. And the numbers here are about the same. You see the US, that's the result of having Trump in power. A story just came out. Trump blocked the USPS from sending out masks to everybody in the country back in April. Trump blocked that from happening. For that not to be your focus, for this not to be your focus, when you have tens of millions of people listening to you, it's something, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Knowing someone has a platform, has the ability to do good, and at times can. When he had Ben Shapiro on, he actually pushed back on a lot of Shapiro's BS. But, but if you listen to most of what he says, most of what he does when he gets into political conversations, it's a lot of bullshit. Now, this is why, let me tell you why. Why a lot of people that do this work, do what I do, will not go after Rogan here. And it's because they have the ability to access his audience. Now, I'm not saying this as a criticism of those people. There are people that have been on the show. I don't need to name, name names, but you know who they are. <laughs> there are people that have been on the show um, that will not do a video on this, that will not comment on this, that will not denounce when Rogan says something stupid. And it's because they have access to his audience. Now, I'm saying this to actually defend those people because you have to understand the strategy changes if you are closer to the individual. If I, if I was on Rogan's show and I had his phone number and, you know, I saw this, I would simply text him and be like, hey, Joe, this is not right. J just so you understand what you said here, this is not correct. Here's the FBI statement on this. As a way to hopefully lead him to correcting this and maybe being more careful in the future. Because denouncing him publicly as somebody who has been on his show would, I think, possibly do more harm than good. Because you still want to be able to have access to that audience and educate people that are listening to his show. So if you do a video, you know, going after him, calling him a moron, <laughs> it, it may not lead to, uh, or it, it would likely lead to you not being invited back on, which is unfortunate also considering Alex Jones. If you go back, look at Alex Jones's comments on Rogan and Alex Jones and Rogan are still friends. So, you know, if you use that as an example, it really shouldn't matter if some of these people go after Rogan publicly, but unfortunately, it likely would. So their best course of action, and I would likely do the same thing they are, their best course of action is to 
not comment on this and message him privately and hopefully get back on the show. But in case you're just in case you're wondering why some of this stuff isn't often covered, and, and this is just really, I mean, a taste. I, again, I had to stop watching the Edward Snowden interview. Several podcasts now, I, I've had to stop in the middle because it's just, it, it's too much. Like, I, I enjoy the guests he has on, but then they get into topics and he start, starts spreading bullshit and it's just too much. So, <laughs> look, hopefully people are, I don't know, a little more aware of the reality here. But this is the show. And as long as he has a massive audience, I'm going to have to continue covering this whenever he says some bullshit.